Hi, it's Penny. I'm back today and I'm talking about the unconventional art journal. Um, if you've been watching any of my videos, you may know that right now I'm working a lot in my Jane Davenport art journal. I like the pages in those journals. Um, they lay pretty flat for me. I use clips to hold them a little flatter. I like the paper. It's a watercolor paper and it's a hot press on one side, cold press type on the other. So you have a smoother surface and a rougher surface. So it'll take a bunch of different types of medium and it'll hand, handle water-based paints and watercolors and that kind of thing. So, but that's not the only journal I've ever worked in or that I even like to work in. And I've had a number over the years that have been rather unconventional. So I'm gonna show them to you now. This first one is one that I made when some friends and I got together for our own little artist retreat years ago. And the cover is made from a really heavy canvas. So the canvas has been cut and it's been folded around the edges all the way so it opens up this long, okay? And so if you see the outside of it, it's just one big piece of canvas and all the sides have been folded in. And then little holes and eyelets have been put in around the edge and then we painted them and I had these little pictures. Let me get where you can see it. These little pictures are actually photos that I had copied on a copier and I put them right on. The ones on the back and on the outside of the journal are actual um, copies of photos and I just glued them right on and painted around them. See, there's a little glare, but I'm trying to get it where you can see it. And so the pages that we put in, there's two types of little pages here. There's watercolor pages, and if you can see the spine here, they are put in with two, let's see, one, two, three holes. So they've been folded. Here, this is what the inside of it looks like. They've been folded, long pieces of paper folded, and in the center here, there are three holes and they coincide with the three holes that are on the back of the spine. And book thread has been used to um, adhere them or to tie them into the journal. And the same thing on the little small flapped pages to this side. I haven't used this one a whole lot because it, it's one of those that was almost too meaningful to use. I'm trying to get over that now, so I'm going back and, and looking at some of these and, and um, starting to bring them out to use them. But it's, a, it's an interesting little thing because there's a little small book and a watercolor journal book. So I could actually, you know, do a journal page and over here I could reference the page and write about it with a gel pen or something. So it, it's got some neat features to it and I liked it. And then the spine, to decorate the spine, it's just a little uh, rose, a uh, little stem from a, a rose bush and uh, it was tied in. Another couple of holes were made and it was just tied in with little knots. And then a little button, two different little buttons on the front, all right, with a little string. And that's how you can tie it up. Isn't that cute? So that's one of the art journals. Again, I made the journal, haven't used it yet, but I'm making plans. This one is another homemade journal. And I'm not positive, I think it might have been made on one of these little artist retreat trips to Rhode Island with the girls. But the, the cover is, um, I believe we used matte board like they use in framing. And you might want to check with your local frame shop and ask them for um, their scraps. Things that are too small for them to use anymore. Uh, they're great for covering and it's, it's covered with really nice paper that you can buy on rolls. Um, I don't know, I've had it for quite a while. So it's got one, this is the back, it's got one big piece, and then the front are two pieces half that size of the big one so that it opens up like this. And then this is another type of really nice type paper that I have glued for the inside. And the pages, you can't have simpler pages because it's folded watercolor paper. Let me see if I can find the middle. And it is simply wrapped in with yarn that is tied up at the top here. 
and it just wraps around. So I can pull these out. Let me see if I can get it where you can see it. I can pull them out or, or insert them. I can add inserts. You can see this is another insert. Okay, and these, I guess, have loosened a little bit over time. I can just pull it out and tighten up the, the string or the yarn for it. And it's got two sides that are done the same way. And again, I can pull these out and bundle them and just add more to it if I want. So that's a neat, unconventional type of art journal. Now this next one is an idea I had when I was in a Goodwill. And <laughs> if you're not of a certain age, you're gonna have no idea what this is about. But back when I was in my mm, 20s, I guess, when I was working in offices and computers were just being rolled out, they came with these big binders. You would get the computer, then you would get the software and it would come with this big binder and then inside the binder there were these pockets that little discs went into these were like when i say floppy they were actually really floppy they were about this big and they slid into a little um slide in kind of like what you put a card reader in at the grocery store but bigger and that's what was in your computer and you slid them in and locked it and it was almost like a little record player and it loaded up on the computer and you ran a program that way. Weird, I know. And I wish I had one to show you how it looked before I, I got hold of it. But this is the box, the binder box that it came in. And then you slid out the binder. And this had all the information for the computer system. So I decided to repurpose these things. And so I got it and I, um, I painted it. This gold that's on here is this webbing spray. I guess they still sell that in the stores. I'm not really sure, but it was really cool. And you could just spray it, preferably outside, because it was smelly and it made a mess, but it had a really cool effect, right? So I did the, the cover of the journal and the box the same way. I did two of these. I did one for gardening, um, but this is one I did. And then I was involved in what we called a round robin with these friends. And every person had a, a binder or however they wanted to make their journal. They sent their pages to the other members and those members decorated it in whatever theme that their book was going to be in. So when I open this book, um, it's really about, the whole thing is about love. All right, let me hold it up. So the whole thing is about love. This is a picture of me as a child and it was really about love and family. And so when I open it up, I can flip through and there are different pages. This is one I did at the time and I'm trying to see. These are ones that different members did. Now, another type of ultra book that I was doing is my husband at the time had a friend that had a wonderful workshop and he had all the tools to be able to take books and put them down on a press and cut out shapes with the books. So he did several for me and they were wonderful. This is one that looks like a tag, isn't that neat? And he just cut it just up here and then drilled a hole for me to make it look like a tag. I thought that was so cool. And um, so I think I've done, you know, a few little pages in here and uh, I've prepped, you know, some more to do. So I might even work in here today a little bit because it's all ready for me. And I thought that was neat. But then he took it a step further because I wanted to do one with my father in mind and it was gonna be based on uh, the song Daddy's Hands. I think it was Holly Dunn um, did that song. And so he did several hands for me. So these are the different ones. You see they're all a little different. But now this one I like it's a little narrower this way. So when you open the page, you had some surface area. It wasn't too bad. So I like that one. This one, although pretty, you can tell when I open it up, there's not a lot of surface area. You can see there's just a little room to do, you know, whatever it is you're going to do. So I didn't discount it as having potential, but for what I was doing at the time, it wasn't what I wanted, you know what I mean? Um, so I've held on to it um, because unfortunately that's what I do. 
I get rid of some things and then I hold on to others for probably far too long. But um, that one didn't quite work out the way I wanted it to and I haven't decided if it would work out for something else. And this is the one I kind of have stuck to and I think I'm going to work in a little bit today. And what I like about this one, someone gave me this book. Um, it was called The Parson's Daughter and my dad was a minister. And so she thought about me. And so when she gave me this, I asked this friend to cut it in the shape of the hands because that's what I wanted to do, something with my daddy's hands in my, in my mind. And I'm not going to do the entire book with, you know, pictures of my dad or whatever, but it, it's with him as an inspiration. And so I came across um, some photos today of my son's wedding. And I thought, well, this would be a good place to, to kind of get back into it and maybe put those pictures in. Because I like including pictures. It kind of makes a, a memory book and a creative outlet all at one. And I call it an art journal because it's art and it's in a book form. So I call it an art journal. So I'm, I'm leaving this out at my table to get back into that because I want to do something with that. So um, you might see a video coming out really quickly on, on a page that I do in that. So those are my unconventional art journals. So just use your imagination when you're out and about and looking at books. You might decide you want to take a book and, and remake it for the purpose of an art journal. Now understand that it takes a little bit more work. You need to prep your, your pages. You'll probably want to glue several pages together to give it stability because a lot of these pages are very thin and you don't want to put all that work into a couple of pages and then they rip. So the first thing I usually do is I go through and I start gluing pages together. So I hope you enjoyed that today, taking a look at some books that you might not think of as art journals, but that can become one. And I would love to see your ideas. Come over to Instagram and follow me. I'm on Penny's Color for Life there. And leave me a message. I'd like to see what kind of things you're doing on your page. And as always, leave me a comment here because I like hearing from you. So take care until I see you next time. Thanks for joining me. Bye.